Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me today. So today I've got nine quick tips that are gonna help you speed up Lightroom. Now, I've picked up these tips over the years. Uh, my old PC was running slow towards the end of its life. And I use these tips to try and help speed things up. Some of these I figured out for myself, some I've researched from the internet and YouTube. I thought I'd put them all together for you so it might help you if you have similar problems. So at the end of the video, we're gonna be announcing the contest winners from the print giveaway as well. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and we'll be picking those winners at the end. So here we are at import SD cards in. These are some recent images I took actually yesterday at a wedding. I'm going to import these. Now, my first tip is just to reduce the thumbnail size. Uh, if you're dealing with you know a 64 gigabyte card or something like that and you've got lots of images just reduce those thumbnails you don't really need to view them if you're going to import everything so reducing the size of the thumbnails massively uh, speeds things up at this point so you're ready for import <music> tip number two is build previews now i always set mine to standard um, and now what this will do it will take longer to import your photographs but when you're looking through your images in the develop module your images will already be rendered at a standard size. So this, uh, this just allows you then just to skip through the images as quickly as possible without having the computer having to render those files. Now you can also go to a one-to-one. -one. Now what this will do is it will render a one-to-one -one preview. So if you click on the image, if you're gonna do lots of say skin retouching or something like that, and you're gonna be regularly zooming in into your photograph to a one-to-one, -one, this will obviously render those files at one-to-one -one on import so they'll be ready for you and you, then the computer won't have to generate a one-to-one -one preview but i don't do that much one-to-one -one preview when i'm uh, editing my images so i've got quite a large monitor so standard works fine for me so just one of those two is going to massively help speed things up when you get to editing the import as i just said it's going to take a lot longer so go and walk your dog go and have a cup of tea have some food while it's doing its thing So tip number three is to apply a preset at import. So for example, my wedding photography, I've got a sort of base preset that I use here, um, as you'll see, my wedding import preset. Now this applies ProNeg standard profile to all of my images and it also adds a bit of contrast, um, a little bit more black, a little bit more white, and just a few tweaks. And then that'll apply that to all of the images. So when they're imported, they'll all be ready for me. So it just saves a little bit of time then editing the images as you go through. Obviously, I'm still going to make some tweaks, but this just saves time and it also speeds things up. Increase your camera raw cache. So go up to Edit Preferences and come over to Camera Raw Cache Settings. As default, it may be on as little as one gigabyte, depending on your previous settings. Uh, this was on five. I've increased it to a maximum size of 20 gigabytes. And it's just gonna give Lightroom and PC more breathing room. It's gonna allow it to be able to cache more data. So definitely recommend upping that to 20 gigabytes and see how you get on. Pull in a library module as opposed to the develop module. Now, it's, I guess pretty much most people will be doing this anyway, but I thought I'd just throw that in there just in case you are not. Now, obviously the quality of the previews in the library module are a lot less and they will preview a lot quicker. They will load and render a lot quicker. So if you've got a lot of images to sort through, do that in library mode and your set increase the screen. And I use the left and right arrows just to go through and pick the images that I would like to keep. So as I'm running through, I will just click P for pick, or if I decide I don't want it, I'll click U for unpick. And I'll just run through left and right arrow keys to select the images I would like to keep. <music> Delete history, now I know this seems a little extreme, but bear with me on this. So if you're editing lots of images, say a wedding like I'm doing right now, um, you'll be making lots of adjustments to lots of files. Now, every, say, 10, 15 images, I'd just advise going and clearing your history because Lightroom has to keep a track of all these adjustments you've made. So it will slow things down. So clearing that history away will free up space and free up running speed as well. So I definitely would recommend clearing your history when you know 
you definitely don't need to go back and do any of those adjustments that you've made. To optimize your catalog now this is so simple and you should definitely do it on a regular basis this kind of defrags everything and just makes the whole process run a lot a lot quicker so just come to file optimize catalog click on that your catalog was last optimized on the 27th of the 7th 2018 if it's been running slowly and you haven't optimized it recently optimizing it again may improve your performance so go ahead and optimize your catalog as regularly as possible just to help things run as smoothly as possible back up your catalog so if things are running not so well come down to catalog settings and mine is set to once a week when exiting lightroom at the moment but if things are running particularly slow for you guys you can change this every time lightroom exits so click on that uh, every time you shut lightroom down it will back up your catalog. Now, I've found previously on my old computer that if things were running slowly, I would just shut Lightroom down, the catalog would back up, and then I'd reopen Lightroom and things would improve dramatically. Making sure that you don't do too many heavy adjustments to your images, try and go back and do them at the end. So if you've got, uh, say, 100 images to edit, run through your 100 images, and do all your basic edits and tweaks. Now, if you know, for example, you need to do some skin retouching, say I needed to, I know I don't here, but say I needed to do some, like maybe some spot removal or something here on Maria's face, then I'd come back and do that at the end if my PC was running slowly, because these use a whole bunch of memory up and uh, you know it can slow things down. So I definitely recommend maybe coming back to do that at the end if things are running slowly, you can easily mark the images in which you'd like to do that on by just clicking on the round circle there so you can see that when you come back. Same goes for making HDR images as well. This will use an incredible amount of memory up because obviously we're blending three raw images together so it's going to take a lot of memory up. So again, I would probably recommend maybe doing that at the end. So if you've got 100 clips to edit, it's better maybe to edit those first and you know you've got one HDR to do, maybe leave that until last and go and do that at the end. Um, you know, obviously that's going to be the most labour intensive one for your uh, computer to handle. So, you know, go and get that done at the end, you know, once you've uh, got the rest of your work done. Yeah, that pretty much uh, concludes my tips and tricks for making Lightroom run faster. Hope, you know, hope this has helped you guys. So guys, if you're into your landscape photography and your photo editing, Lightroom and Photoshop tips and tricks, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate that. And hit the notification bell button as well and you'll be notified next time I make an upload. So guys, let's get on with picking these winners. So the affiliate links have made just under £15, uh, not a huge amount, but I'm going to top that up to £20, so round it up to £20. So the, the first prize will get £20 and also my first ever limited edition print. The second prize will get a limited edition print and the third prize will get a limited edition print. So they're three different prints. So they're all one of 15s. So it'll be the first of the edition and you'll get them shipped straight out to you. So let's get on with picking a winner. Now we're gonna use Tube Buddies pick a winner from the comments section. So it's gonna be completely random. So we are going to pick the first prize right now. Scott Tilly Landscape Photography. Uh, yeah, Scott, I, met, I talked to Scott quite a bit. That's really cool. I'm really glad you've uh, won the £20, Scott, and also the print, my first ever limited edition print. So that'll be getting sent out to you. I'll be in touch. I'm really glad you've won that, Scott. You're a really nice guy. Really enjoy your vlogs as well. Um, just read the comment out. Great to see you out with Ollie. I know Leah, my daughter, loved our first wild camp in the peaks a few weeks ago. Loved the missed shots at the end, but I bet photography really took a back seat compared to sharing the experience with your son. Yeah, it totally did. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked out that vlog, I'll put the link at the top there. Fantastic. Really glad you've won that one, Scott. So second prize goes to Jamie Overland. Uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, Jamie again comments regularly on the channel, so I'm really, really pleased that you've uh, you've got the second prize, Jamie. Um, you were blessed with some lovely conditions there in the mist made for an awesome shot of the Peak District and gradually making my way around the key locations. 
Skin, Kinder Scout is now on my list. Fantastic, Jamie, I'll be in touch and that print will be getting sent out to you. So third prize is just going to be picked right now. Ted Simonet. Uh, fantastic, Ted. Lovely comment that you gave. Actually, I remember this one. Fantastic comment. Um, yeah, you'll be getting the third print and I'll be sending that out to you. So I'll read the comment out. One reason I appreciate watching other photographers' vlogs is that they almost always share the same feelings of frustration all of us have far too often when we put in a tremendous amount of effort for little or no return. When the light or the composition doesn't materialise. Misery loves company, I guess, but honestly, it is affirming that we all go through the same merry-go-round emotionally and that it reinforces me the notion that the hike and the experience of being there is as important as the images we make. Thanks Ian for your efforts and your images are more than just the icing on the cake. Fantastic comment, Ted. Excellent. Uh, yeah, totally share those, those emotions. So they're the three winners. Uh, the prints will be going out. I'll be in touch with everybody just to let them know. Um, awesome comments, guys. Really, really appreciate it. I'll definitely be running something like this in the future as well. So yeah, I um, really enjoyed it. So that about wraps it up for today, guys. Hope you got something from the video. Let us know in the comments if you've got any questions whatsoever. I'll definitely get back to you. See you soon.